Hello, welcome to my channel. This is Emerly with my Sugar Rush, and today we're gonna go over how to make this beautiful rainbow rosette swirl buttercream cake. First, I'm gonna show you how to fill your piping bag two different ways. So this first method is just using a small offset spatula to run a streak of color up the side of your bag. You can also pipe it in your bag as well. Then you fill the rest of your bag with a lighter shade of that same color. And the end of this piping bag has a skinny teardrop shape. So what I'm going to do is push the piping tip into the bag and twist it around because we want the skinny end of that teardrop shape to line up with that streak of color inside the bag. Then when you pipe it, you wanna kind of do an up and down motion and it's kind of more in the wrist than anything else. And you wanna make sure the end, the skinny end is lifted off of the surface. This next method is using plastic wrap. So I laid out plastic wrap and I'm just using a rubber spatula to spread out streaks of colors. And then I'm just gonna add a little bit more color to it and blend some of those colors together ever so lightly. Then you pick up your plastic wrap and gently roll the buttercream onto itself, kind of like a jelly roll. And once you roll that up, then you wanna seal it up, roll the rest of it together, and twist the ends of your bag. Okay, cut the end of your actual piping bag, and this one has a large close star tip. Cut the end of your jelly roll and place it inside of your piping bag. And now you can squeeze all of that buttercream out of the end of your piping bag and it has a nice, beautiful, assorted color arrangement in there. And to do the rosette swirl, you start in the center, you go around in a circle, and with a little flick of the wrist while releasing pressure, you flick away and you're able to create that nice, beautiful swirl. Now I'm starting with the ruffle tip and I am just twisting the bag going into different directions and just making sure that they are kind of evenly spaced throughout the cake. After I add all of these ruffles, then I start to do my rosette swirls. And I start with my large piping tips first, then I start doing some of the smaller tips later on. So you can see here with this two-tier cake that I actually already covered all of it in buttercream and I pre-stacked the cake. It already has the proper structuring inside, it has straws, and it has a center dowel going through the whole cake. I do make my cakes extra tall, so we want to make sure that it doesn't fall over on the way over to its party, so I do like to add my uh, larger board, a uh, cake drum, on the bottom of my cake so that it has a wider feet to it and it doesn't topple over on the way over to its party. So you just wanna slowly work with your piping tips to fill in all of that white space. Some of these rosette swirls, I got a little bit crazy and I started doing zigzag shapes with them as well. Once I started, I just had to keep going. And it started to look a little funky at first, but I actually really love the end result of this cake. It's just a beautiful, bright, colorful explosion. So you might be wondering what kind of buttercream I'm using for this cake. So I actually, I really love to use Swiss meringue buttercream. It, I think it's the best buttercream out there. It's my personal favorite. It's easy to make and it's easy to work with. Also, for those of you out there who have really hot hands like I do, I tend to melt everything in my hands when I'm working with butter and sugar, and Swiss is less likely to melt in my hand when I'm continually piping onto things, so I really love that part about it. American frosting just doesn't hold up as well. Now the problem with the Swiss meringue buttercream that I do have to deal with is that it does not want to take on all of these colors as well. So when you're trying to do bright, colorful cakes, it just does not look right. So to get around that, I actually do add a dollop or two of American frosting to my Swiss meringue buttercream, just so that it takes on the color better. 
You also want to let your buttercream sit for a little bit and it will take a little while for it to saturate to its true color, especially reds or blacks or any dark color. It does need some time to sit and saturate. And the different colors that I'm working with here is a kind of like a lime electric green. I have a golden yellow with a little bit of that green mixed in. I have a watermelon pink, a light pink, purple, light teal, and a dark teal. It was just a fun little color assortment, not something that you would expect to see. Okay, at this point I'm using my smaller piping tips and I'm just trying to fill in all the spaces that I can see where any of that white is still showing through the cake. I actually almost started running out of buttercream when I was trying to cover this cake, so I had to stop around this point and I had to make that giant bag of the watermelon in light pink color just to be able to finish my cake. Oops, that was an accident. My bad. Okay, so we're near the end here. I'm just filling in all of those empty spaces. Very bright, colorful, beautiful. And guess what? Surprise! There is also a smash cake. So with the smash cake, you can see I'm doing the same exact technique. I'm doing the ruffles or yeah, I'm doing the ruffles first and then I'm going to start doing the rosette swirls and all the other piping tips. So the ruffles are the teardrop shape. Everything else is an assort assorted sizes of the closed stars and the open star tips. If I were to do this design again, I probably wouldn't add that much white buttercream as the base. I was a little bit worried that some of that white would, sh would peek through the buttercream. So I wanted to make sure that none of the cake was showing. I'd rather white buttercream show than like chocolate cake showing through all this bright, beautiful colors. But now I'm realizing if I were to do this design again, it was actually pretty easy to fill in all of those bases that were showing and I actually didn't have to worry about it as much as I thought I did. So yeah, I think if I were to do this again, it would be a naked cake. All right, well, we are near the end here. Let me know if you have any questions on how this works. I don't have a full list of all the piping tips that I did use here. I should have kept better track of that, my bad. Make sure that you clean your board so that it's a nice clean presentation. Don't forget to like and especially don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more delicious content coming your way. And while you're here, why don't you check out some of these other videos.